Hi, I'm John. I'm going to give you a quick talk on memory leaks. I, I'm a developer from Canada. I'm based uh, out of Kelowna at a little startup there. I've been working with Angular since the very first alpha releases. Um, so what is a memory leak? At its most basic level, it's just memory that is no longer, like your application requires some memory, it's no longer needed, and it's not correctly released back to your operating system. And why do you need to care as a developer? Well, memory leaks can lead to like, significant performance issues. You're going to have users starting out using the app. It's going to be running great. And after time, that performance is going to degrade, and the user experience will get worse. You could crash their browser in the worst case, or you might crash their tab in the middle of a critical task. And those users probably pay for your salary, so it's important to keep them happy. <laughs> so in my mind, there's two types of memory leaks. Uh, there's the contrived examples you see in every tutorial. They don't really apply to what you actually find in the real world. And they're a nice example of how to find a memory leak, but they don't help you solve it. And there's the real ones, the ones you're going to find in your giant enterprise application you're working on, that those examples didn't help you solve at all. So with that said, there are a couple easy to solve memory leaks that you're going to see in Angular applications. The first thing you should always do is just turn off the console API when you're trying to solve a memory leak, when you're trying to track it down. Um, basically, anything you log to the console is going to stay in memory. And the second is long-lived observables. So anything you subscribe to, just make sure you unsubscribe. This is a general rule. So what are the steps to handle a, a real leak when your boss comes to you? The well, first thing I did, I freak out a little bit because I don't really know what he's talking about. Uh, I went and Googled what is a memory leak so I could answer his question when he came back in an hour. And then I just opened the Chrome DevTools. That's really all you need to do. That's the only tool you should really need to solve the issue. Of course, if the leak's happening in a different browser, you might have to use the tools in a different browser, but the Chrome DevTools are the best in my opinion. So you open them up and the first thing I would recommend using is the timeline view. Um, <clears throat> it gives you great insights into what's happening in your application for overall performance. Uh, and memory specifically, it'll let you know, is the memory leaking in your JavaScript heap? Do you have DOM nodes leaking? Um, is it your event listeners? When's the leak happening? As you click through, was it five seconds in, 10 seconds in? Maybe you can roughly isolate it to some certain event. And how much memory is being leaked? Is it really tiny or is it gigantic? Are you going to crash your user's app in 10 seconds? That wouldn't be great. Um, so after that, if you need a more detailed view, you can jump into the allocation timeline. And in here, uh, you can break it down and you can look at specific chunks of your application and see exactly what memory was allocated there, what memory was retained. Um, it's really going to help you notice if there's a certain view or screen in your application that's retaining the memory, maybe a certain button you're clicking. You'll be able to isolate it. You might even see the exact component listed. And that's really, that would be fantastic. And then if you need even more insights, you can jump into heap snapshots. And that's going to give you a snapshot of all the memory being used in your application at any specific time. So outside of those tools, what are you looking for? Or what are you even looking for in those tools? You want to know what actions are causing the leak. So is it constantly happening? Is it just happening on navigation? Is it happening on a certain event firing? Does it happen everywhere in your browser or only certain screen, or everywhere in your app or only certain screens? And does it happen in all browsers? Or maybe it's specific to one browser. You want to test like a real user. You're going to be sitting there in your development environment, Webpacks rebuilding your application every minute. But your real users are sitting in their office and they haven't turned their computer off for 30 days and they haven't closed the tab either. So even the smallest memory leak can become an issue for them. You can start removing code if you think there's anything that might be problematic. If there's a certain third party library maybe you think is problematic or a certain directive or component. And if you can't remove whatever that is, maybe it's an integral third party library, build an app using just that or using what you think are the problem elements and see if the leak persists there. Still can't figure it out? You can just give up, or you could come to my workshop tomorrow, go into more detail, and upgrade to Angular 4, I would say. Uh, out of everything I've worked with, it really stops you from making the mistakes that cause memory leaks. Thanks for coming to my talk. If you want to see the slides, you can go there. And my mom says hi, so. <laughs> Thank you.